Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today I will explain uh, a recent paper which was released around two weeks back into archive uh, called uh, Speech Sentiment Analysis via uh, Pre-trained Features from End-to-End -end ASR Models. So this uh, paper is published in collaboration between uh, University of Southern California, California and uh, Google and uh, only the first author is from usc and all others are from google and uh, the tutorial is going to cover the introduction of the pa of the paper then we will see uh, the proposed method uh, or the algorithm they are uh, uh, explaining in this paper and uh, then you will see the final experiments and results so uh, what is sentiment analysis uh, many people uh, may be already knowing what is sentiment analysis not uh, really uh, like uh, NLP, ba NLP based or text based sentiment analysis it is more of audio based and uh, this is nothing but emotion classification which we do in uh, uh, which we do in speech emotion uh, recognition and uh, the same thing uh, they are just calling it as sentiment analysis uh, we'll see why and uh, the the approach here is to use a pre-trained speech recognition engine uh, some end-to-end uh, -end speech recognition model to extract uh, features from the encoder and use that uh, those features which will have some information about the emotion or the sentiment uh, which we can use to classify uh, that particular audio into one of the emotion classification example angry happy or neutral or sad something like that right uh, so the idea is to use a pre-trained model so assuming this pre-trained model will have uh, some information about the emotion I mean, even though it is trained for speech recognition uh, think of it as some, some sort of uh, transfer learning which we are uh, which we do in emo image for example right so uh, then uh, so for that they are using uh, uh, something called uh, rnn based self attention uh, sentiment classifier on top of this asr model uh, that is the speech uh, pre trained uh, speech recognition encoder and uh, they we will see some visualization of how this attention method is useful for the for getting better uh, sentiment classification accuracy right. and uh, as we know uh, most of the uh, most of the papers which we uh, publish in emotion uh, will be based on uh, will be for imocap data set which is uh, some uh, baseline uh, data which people uh, which uh, usc itself has published and it's open source and uh, that is one data set and second data set they are using is a switchboard sentiment uh, 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 this data set does not exist actually switchboard data set is a speech recognition data set uh, but they uh, but google people annotated this uh, this 140 hour hours of uh, sorry uh, yeah i think 40 i'm not sure we'll, we'll explain that so this large uh, is a switchboard data set for uh, sentiment classification uh, we will see uh, how they did that and uh, what was the data set size and so on and uh, finally we'll see uh, they say they got some state-of-the-art accuracy on imocap uh, from 66 to 71 percent which is kind of uh, state-of-the-art uh, results because i feel there is another paper uh, which has got around 83 percent accuracy which was published in last interspeech uh, just using audio data uh, i'm not sure why they didn't compare uh, their results i mean the google people why they didn't compare that paper results with this uh, but anyway uh, they are considering some other 2019 icas paper as the baseline or not baseline as the state of the art paper and then they are saying they got around four uh, percent or approximately five percent improvement on on uh, compared to their model and uh, uh, that is still fine and uh, that is the accuracy and then we'll see we'll see what is that other paper and uh, all this uh, architecture details and so on so so the uh, proposed approach as i said uses uh, a speech recognition model uh, first we'll see the whole architecture or we'll see the entire method then we will explain uh, each and every part of that uh, architecture like first they have this speech recognition into end speech recognition then they have something called sentiment decoder and then finally this is some spectrogram augmentation is basically some sort of augmentation technique so this is the proposed approach 
so basically they have a pre-trained asr so pre-trained asr is nothing but a, a speech recognition uh, model which will just take a uh, audio and uh, predicts the text uh, of that audio basically speech to text engine so for example here they are the audio has this yeah that is so awesome and uh, the model is predicting yeah that is so awesome so basically the end-to-end -end model has uh, uh, encoder and decoder network so encoder is basically some sort of bail stm and decoder is some sort of bail stm and then this is what happens in the speech recognition part but not exactly they are using sequence sequence model they are using sequence sequence model but something called rnn transducer based model if you don't if you want to understand what is rnn transducers uh, which i have explained in previous tutorials you can go and watch them so this is just anything but the same sequence sequence model but it has something called not exactly sequence sequence model it has something called prediction network along with uh, uh, deep speech kind of model so anyway um, if you want to understand that in detail you can go and watch them but assume it has some sort of encoder and decoder and a decoder is basically decodes the encoder features and the encoder basically encodes the spectrogram or uh, some sort of input mfcc features into some high level representation which is kind of interpretable may not be interpretable may have some sort of uh, uh, some uh, information about uh, maybe emotion or maybe gender or maybe uh, speakers and so on basically the high level information about the audio but one of the information could also be emotion because uh, uh, maybe that is also one of the uh, the maybe we these high level features may also help us to uh, get the emotion uh, recognition uh, better so uh, basically assume that uh, the enco encoder a uh, encoder uh, the let's assume encoder is a uh, some sort of a function uh, let's call it as e it it takes a sequence of features from uh, let's say x1 to t and uh, gets you some sort of features 1 to t so this could be different dimension x could be let's say 300 dimension and this could be some other maybe 128 dimensions so on right but t is the time duration or basically the number of frames in the input right so let's say the encoder basically encoding this kind of thing and then uh, <coughs> then after that after we have this speech recognition what we do is we take all our emotion audio audio data then we feed this through this encoder and get this uh, high level representation which are these hefs then once we have this sequence of high level features then we can build a sentiment classifier or we can or something called sentiment decoder which basically takes all these high level features and then uh, predicts the sentiment and this sentiment decoder can be anything it can be a cnn or it can be a rnn or it can be some sort of self attention model so uh, they have considered all these three option not three uh, they have considered dnn by lstm and uh, uh, the the self attention model so basically what happens you have this encoder representation f which will just go through this sequence of this f1 f2 f3 uh, so on ft will go through sequence of bail uh, stm uh, layers and then you have this attention which is basically self attention um, uh, we'll explain all these things later and then finally predicts the label right and this is the whole thing i mean this is what is exactly happening i mean not that complicated or anything i mean not uh, like a uh, completely uh, kind of uh, crazy architecture or anything but it's a uh, it's kind of uh, easy and but uh, the most important thing is the way the boost up in accuracy is happening they are able to explain right and this is the approach and now we will understand uh, things uh, detailed uh, so what is asr i mean asr is as you may people know many people may be knowing asr is nothing but a speech recognition which bas basically takes the audio and predicts the transcript or generates the transcript right so basically they are using something called end to end model end to end model could be any deep speech or sequence to sequence or transducer models so they are considering rn transducer model as i said if you want to understand this in detail please go back to my channel and search for this rnn transducer and i have explained these things in detail right and uh, um, the encoder basically is a sort of an acoustic model you can think in uh, case of dnn hmm case you have this acoustic model then you have language model and then we fuse these two but you can think of this encoder as an acoustic model which basically uh, understands the in spectrogram and gets you some meaningful or gets you some high level features which are useful right uh, for let's say phoneme prediction yeah that's the idea of acoustic model and think of this encoder in sequence sequence model also as some sort of an acoustic model and uh, uh, as i said we'll use this acoustic model or the encoder to get a high level representation then uh, as i said you can use it as a feature extractor also uh, which will have some useful information about speech and then we uh, 
Uh, I mean, this is the this is the thing we are hypothesizing. We are assuming the encoded features will have some rich information about sentiments, right? Uh, I mean, I am te I I'll tell you why it is called sentiment because they have another data set which is a switchboard, which is not an emotion data set, but it is sentiment data set which has positive, negative, and neutral so, so I mean, different kinds of things, right? So. Uh, so what is this sentiment decoder the sentiment decoder is the same thing like mlp uh, i mean as i mentioned it can be uh, it will just take the features f uh, one to t and then uh, assume this is some sort of a, a sentiment uh, model or sentiment uh, in, in decoder and then predicts what is the uh, label whether it's angry happy or neutral or sad right so this is a sentiment decoder it can be any of these i mean you can use cnn rnn mlp whatever you like and they have done experiments with all three uh, these three rnn multi-head self attention you can ask maybe many people may be knowing about mlp basically what is what do they do is they take all these sequence of high level features and they pull a uh, pool all of them using average pooling or max pooling and then they combine uh, then they get one vector which they do it use it to classify the uh, label then rnn is as i explained you have sequence of frames you just uh, you have forward and negative backward uh, lstm or by lstm then you do the classification the interesting thing is multi head self attention which is self attention is a known thing uh, from past two years many people have been using it and in fact even i have used for some work and uh, the idea of self attention is uh, which is uh, kind of uh, uh, tries to look into the context around it. So basically, you have uh, let's say a sequence of frames like this. So basically, let's say you take uh, what you do is you take the first frame and try to look uh, look at all the other frames and try to find correlation among these all the other frames with the current one. And you do the same thing with all of them, and you come up with something called attention weights. And these attention weights can be used to uh, uh, compute one vector which is basically gives you the weights for each of these vector and then one vector and if you have multiple heads maybe let's say you have 10 heads uh, you get 10 different vectors and you concatenate all of them and use them so i mean it's kind of very interesting idea if you want to understand this in detail i have made a tutorial called all you need is attention uh, and you can just go and watch it i mean it's a uh, it's a beautiful model i mean uh, all these uh, i mean it has kind of changed all how uh, people used to do nlp in fact in uh, currently they use something called bird uh, there are so many other things gpt and all they all use this self attention because it's like very powerful algorithm and even in speech many people are trying to use it and uh, looks like they are getting a much better uh, performance uh, gains uh, using this this uh, self attention so so uh, this is the one which will be which will be using for the final experiment i think in this and uh, <coughs> then they have this spectrogram augmentation which is called uh, sometimes called specog uh, many people may be knowing about it this is like one of the recent uh, technique people have come up from google only i think people propose this thing basically the idea is to uh, augment the data set basically if you have a spectrogram like this you just uh, chop out the some of the middle part in the x axis and y axis and then use it directly so basically it's kind of ro gives you robustness to the model second thing is it kind of uh, gives uh, i mean makes the model uh, less uh, prone to overfitting because usually the the imogap data and all are like very, very small like they have around uh, 5000 utterances and so on right so uh, yeah so that is about spec augment uh, now we will see the experiments uh, uh, what they have done in the experiment section they have used two data set for the experimentation one is called imocap many people may be knowing about it so this is the standard data set people use to uh, use to uh, uh, publish their emotion recognition uh, performance uh, algorithms performance then uh, uh, this data has uh, multiple emotions but people take only four emotions uh, basically they combine happy and excited into one neutral sad angry remaining are this and uh, these are the number of sentences available and uh, they do something called tenfold cross validation because they have 10 speaker and uh, some other people will do also do something called five fold cross validation because they have five different sessions and so on right uh, that is one thing and second thing is uh, <coughs> uh, second thing is uh, this uh, that is the first data set second data set is switchboard data set basically this switchboard is uh, a speech recognition data set uh, people use for speech recognition benchmarking and uh, this this google uh, people have taken this data set and uh, annotated all the sentiments basically the sentiments could be this neutral sentiment positive and negative sentiments these are the percentage of the data and uh, that is the idea of uh, that is uh, that is the 
main important thing for them i think because they want it sentiment that's why this paper names is sentiment and not exactly emotion uh, so uh, that is about the switchboard data and uh, for experimentation they use all this 80 80 dimensional feature for the input and uh, this is the window size and this is the shift size then as i said uh, for speech recognition they use rnnt transducer uh, and it is trained on youtube data set and it is like one of the other paper um, which you can refer in the bo in the paper um, then finally the sentiment classifier we can use uh, they, as i said they have used by lstm mlp and uh, self attention and the for the for final final lay a final uh, uh, model which is this by lstm along with self attention uses uh, one under by one bidirectional lstm layer with 64 union units in each direction and one multi head self attention i don't know why they call it multi head because they have only one head they could have called self attention just just like that uh, but anyway uh, sorry uh, sorry this is sorry i'm sorry about that so this is one multi head self attention which is one layer self attention but it has eight heads right now ah, got it so this is eight heads and 32 hidden units per head sorry about that so it's a uh, one self one layer of self attention but it has eight uh, uh, heads the um, uh, the self attention heads so coming to the result section uh, this column is for IMO cap this column is for uh, uh, switchboard so in the IMO cap if you use only the uh, acoustic uh, I mean only the audio uh, unweighted accuracy you get around 70 67 percent if you use audio and text uh, you will get uh, this much unweighted accuracy and weighted accuracy so the difference between weighted and unweighted is uh, is like this so weighted accuracy it's uh, sort of you just take all the label all the predictions for all your test data and you then uh, find out the accuracy in one shot for example just use this sk learns uh, accuracy matrix so the unweighted accuracy is basically uh, that uh, sorry uh, weighted accuracy is basically that unweighted accuracy is basically you take predictions per class so like you take angry class in the test data and you get all the prediction and compute accuracy for it then you do the same thing for all other classes and you then average all of them uh, that is the unweighted accuracy right and uh, as you can see the end-to-end -end asr uh, you get uh, 60 71 percent which is like quite huge uh, improvement and uh, same thing goes for this also and humans is basically i mean <laughs> they are like the best uh, as you know and uh, same thing goes for uh, switchboard uh, the data set they're using also it's the same thing you get a very good improvement if you use the speech recognition along with the <coughs> speech recognition features basically and uh, if you use text along with speech you get quite a good number of quite a good accuracy uh, both in case of unweighted and weighted case and humans is uh, like that and uh, coming to some ablation study on IMOCAP, as I said, uh, if you use decoders, what kind of decoders, uh, all these things you can you can see here. And what is the effect of spec augment also you can see here. It is kind of good that if you combine spec augment and uh, uh, the all this uh, attention method and so on. So uh, that's one thing. Second thing is they have done some ablation study on how the attention model is helpful. Uh, during the <coughs> during the prediction basically they are plotting all these attention weights for each and every word so you could see that if you have happy class the prediction is happily then you have this laughter cool laughter and wonderful great and so on and if it is in sad or angry it's a sorry or tired uh, these kind of uh, bad words right so this is the um, uh, whole idea of the paper and uh, that's about it uh, for this tutorial uh, thank you so much for watching this tutorial uh, if you are not subscribed to my youtube channel please subscribe and if you like this video uh, please give a thumbs up thank you